We would be honored if you would join us. May the third be with you, everyone. Welcome to day three of the Phantom Manus. It still doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> No, this is in lieu of my usual Power of the Force Fridays for the entire month of May. We're going to be doing Figure Friday, and we're going to be taking a look at a handful of the figures from 1999's Phantom Menace line. So this week, we're looking at the heroes. Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, Anakin Skywalker, Padme, Naberi, Jar Jar Binks, and the Queen. Uh, just elected for this version of the Queen. Seemed to be the most iconic, probably the second most iconic from the uh, from the other one which is up on the shelf, but that was technically a Power of the Jedi figure, so I've decided to stick with this one. So we'll get a little look at each of these figures. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, this one sort of came to me in rec in more recent years. I do have the robed one. There's, there's a robed version of Obi-Wan Kenobi where he's holding his lightsaber at the belt, my best friend growing up, he had this Qui-Gon and I had the robed Obi-Wan and I was always a little bit bummed that I couldn't couldn't track this one down or I didn't get a hold of this one. I wanted the more action orientated Obi-Wan Kenobi. The, the, the plastic on this one's gotten a little bit sticky. Um, just the way the plastic has sort of, you know, he's been sitting in storage for a long time. So he may need to go through the dishwasher. I have worked out that that works for figures. If they get us a sticky, gummy plastic, run them through the dishwasher and they'll come out beautifully. Um, so yeah, he's going to go and have a bath after this. But yeah, still loved, you know, this. these were the first figures that were able to, ever able to hold a lightsaber with two arms, which is just the coolest thing ever, you know? Like, that was just exciting in itself. chonky Padawan braid but yeah it was an exciting time seeing a young Obi-Wan Kenobi we sort of take this sort of thing for granted now that we've had Ewan McGregor for you know over 20 years on 25 years now he's sort of ingrained as Obi-Wan Kenobi but back then seeing just the, the sheer imagination and wonder of seeing what a young Obi-Wan Kenobi would look like was an absolute thrill. Yeah, Qui-Gon Jinn, again, hang on the double-handed grip on the lightsaber. So good. I loved it. And he's, getting a, he's got a little bit of that stickiness to him as well, so... Haven't found that happening with any of my Power of the Force figures, um, but yeah, some of the some random figures throughout the years have just started to get that stickiness to the plastic. It's not the end of the world. It's actually nice to get them nice and clean because then dust doesn't stick to them as well, which is good. But yeah, it's uh, again the sort of awe and wonder of. Who was who was Obi Wan Kenobi's master? I mean, we always assumed it was Yoda, but to find later that Yoda was actually a trainer of many. You know, he did take Dooku as an apprentice, Qui Gon's master, but yeah, Yoda kind of did teach every Jedi to a degree. So there's Qui Gon Jinn. Well, Anakin Skywalker, obviously the uh, the main, the main, main, main <laughs> of the Phantom Menace. Still got the backpack. I love that they finally did this guy in the Black Series six inch scale. This figure, I feel like this figure still holds up today in this scale. I would yes, I would love to see an updated. You know, more articulated version of Anakin. Little Annie, little Tatooine Anakin. You know, this one, I think he still holds up reasonably well. 25 years later. He still looks fine on the shelf. You know, it's... I'm sure they could get a lot more detail into it now, but... You know, he's still got the weathering on the clothes, and... He's got the backpack. He did come with a little oil gun that's sort of sitting in the accessories box. 
This is Little Annie. The Padme and the Berry. You know, I really like this sort of simple, almost peasant-like outfit, I guess. You know, trying to blend in with the with the normies of Tatooine. Oh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Hair's just popped off the back of her head. I'll have to glue that back on afterwards. It could be just a little bit of wear and tear there. That's, you know, it's not worn. It's just the glue's just unstuck over the years. There you go. <laughs> her hair is removable. But yeah, again, I like the details on her outfit here. This, this is another figure I think, yeah, could definitely be updated. Not essential, of course, but, you know, it could be. Could be updated. There's a few versions of Padme Amidala. We'd rather see in TVC before this version. Mainly the uh, the one that the Black Series just got, the sort of the end battle. There is Padme Naberi. Now Jar Jar Binks, this figure has been with me since 1999. I remember a few years ago, I had this mark on him. I, I dropped him on something and he had this little blue on his top lip. And it was just a stain I could never wash off. And then the world of acetone nail polish remover came to me. <laughs> One simple little wipe and it was gone. It was nice and clean. He looked like the Jar Jar figure that I'd bought. I can't remember if I bought it or I was gifted it. I assume I was probably gifted it. I may have bought it with pocket money, but... Again, I still think this 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 look of Jar Jar still holds up. You know, the, the articulation's not there. There was we've had some better better Jar Jars since, but you know, I think he still looks good. I've always been a fan of Jar Jar Binks. I've I've never been one of the haters. It's just I understand. <laughs> I understand that people found him annoying, but I just didn't see it. I just didn't see it. I didn't feel it, at least. I, I saw it, I just didn't feel it. To me, he's sort of misunderstood, who's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a good character study, though. Trying to learn, you know, learning about Jar Jar Binks and how he was misunderstood for all those years. And then last but not least, let's stand these folks back up again. We have Queen Amidala, one of many different versions of Amidala. This one still holds up, you know, they're a little bit of a traffic cone, a lot of them were, a lot of them still are. You know, the big, big regal gowns, but... You know, what, are you meant to, what else are you meant to do with them? Honestly, <laughs> they're not—they're not made to be action figures. They're the scene fillers. They fill the shelves. There's so much detail on them, sculpt-wise, fantastic. Skinny little legs underneath there. No articulation. Doesn't need it. Does not need it at all. It's got a little bit of a swivel there in the arms. Again, just that sort of sticky plastic, you can sort of see a little bit of dust sort of forming around the head. Perfect opportunity while they're off the shelf to go and give them a wash. I'm get them clean before I put them back on display. So there's the main heroes, what I call the main heroes of the film, in action figure form. There are obviously more more characters like that but we're going to take a look at as many as we can over the over the five fridays of may so stay tuned next week we'll do another figure friday um looking forward to doing that one but for may the third we'll see you tomorrow for another video